The following NET program is available in high definition on NET HD. Live from the Bob Devaney Sports Center, the 2009 NSAA State High School Basketball Championships. Brought to you in part by Nebraska Community Colleges. The Nebraska Catholic Conference. 1 Oak Energy Marketing. Nebraska Relay. Southeast Community College. Nebraska Furniture Mart. And by Concordia University. Good morning and welcome inside the Bob Devaney Sports Center. It is championship Saturday in the Boys High School State Basketball Tournament alongside John Bishop. I'm Kevin Suits. Six title games on tap starting here in the AM with a C2 matchup, John, that pits Ravenna against Freeman. You know, Freeman is a school where we kind of expected to see a lot more of them here after the combined efforts of Adams and Philly merged together back in 1998 to form Freeman School. However, they've been to state four times previous, but have never gotten this far. You look back at the history of Adams and Philly, they dominated Class D basketball back from about 1968 to 1998, but now they have finally made it here and have an opportunity to come in here and win a state championship as a combined unit. Now on the other side, you have Ravenna, a very young basketball team, a team that will play no less than three freshmen. They have five on the roster. They call them the Baby Jays, and they have played very well. They play that very intense style of Ravenna basketball that we've become used to seeing, especially from their girls' teams. We'll see if they can parlay that success into a state championship today. We will meet those teams in just a moment, but first, from the Devaney Center, it's our national anthem. Lincoln Southwest High School. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Harry Norman. Beautiful rendition by Harry Norman of Lincoln Southwest High School, our national anthem. Let's take a look at where these two teams hail. Ravenna, they know how to get here. They were here last week for the girls' tournament just a few miles north of Kearney. Come in with a record of 22 and 5. They've played a very difficult schedule. We will talk about that as the broadcast develops. For Freeman, only one loss on the season. That came to Bruning Davenport, one of the top teams in the smaller classes in Nebraska. And when you look at how these two teams got here, Ravenna with an easy victory on day one, same as Freeman. A little bit tougher yesterday for Ravenna, and Freeman taking care of last year's Class D1 state champion, Archbishop Bergen. Should be a really good matchup, a great way to start off this 99th Boys State Championship tournament. Now with the player introductions, here's public address announcer, Doc Weiniger. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Nebraska School Activities Association, its member schools, and U.S. Bank, welcome to the Bob Devaney Sports Center for the Class C2 state championship game. Today's game features the Ravenna High School Blue Jays versus the Falcons of Freeman High School. 
And now, let's meet the players and coaches competing in today's game. First, the non-starters for the visiting team, the Ravenna Blue Jays. Number 12, Spencer Kromosta. Number 21, Trevor Saborn. Number 22, Josh Crowell. Number 25, Tyson Anderson. Number 30, Connor Baranek. Number 42, Ethan Zorb. And number 44, Sean Payne. And now, the non-starters for the home team, the Freeman Falcons. Number 11, Dylan Wallman. Number 15, Taylor McKeekin. Number 24, Hayden Scott. Number 30, Andy Garecki. Number 34, Kellen Unberg. Number 45, Brandon Altman. And number 55, Dallas Eschelford. And now, the starting lineup for the Ravenna Blue Jays. A 6-2 senior, number 15, Eric Johnson. A 6-2 junior, number 20, John Klosterman. A 6-2 junior, number 31, Riley Baranek. 5-11 senior, number 40, Adam Mingus. And a six-foot junior, number 41, Brett Douglas. The Blue Jays are coached by Paul Baranek, assisted by Tony Shermer, Randy Basnett, and Brian Duncan. And now, the starting lineup for the Freeman Falcons. A 5-10 junior, number 14, Eric Rath. A six-foot senior, number 22, Ryan Busboo. A 5'11 senior, number 23, Elliot Mensal. A 6'9 junior, number 35, Kyle Schley. And a 6'1 junior, number 40, Jordan Pella. Head coach for the Falcons is Jim McLaughlin, assisted by Travis Andreessen and Kurt Little. Today's game officials are Willie Beeman, Rich Bookman, and Dave Eggy. And now, gentlemen, let's play basketball! It's Freeman and Ravenna in the C2 title game. Let's go down courtside and meet the third member of our broadcast team, Dan Hedman. Hey, good morning, guys. You know, one thing to keep an eye on this game is two seniors from Freeman, and Ryan Busboom. Both of them started as freshmen, had their team back in the title game for their career. Over a thousand points for each one of them, so they can certainly score. Guys? Well, that is so very true. Thank you, Dan. And that is one of the big differences. You look up and down these rosters, Kevin, and it looks pretty even. A heavy, dominated by guards, very quick, aggressive team. Until you get in the middle of that Freeman lineup and you get to Kyle Schlake, the junior who is 6'9 and averages 11 points a game. He is the only real big player height-wise that we have in this game. You see him in the center circle right there jumping against John Klosterman. That may be the one difference if you take a look at this matchup today. Otherwise, look for Ravenna to be very aggressive out there. They play an up-and-down 94-foot style of basketball. Ravenna head coach Paul Bronick was even joking about that, how you know they have nobody to match up with Schlake. So he knows this might have to be an up-and-down game, and they really have to make sure that they can try to neutralize the post. And nearly got a first shot three out of Ryan Busboom, but it was rejected by the basket. It was heading down, but came back up. And we are quickly underway. Freeman, just one loss this year, came to Bruning Davenport. A drive inside, no dice. Back the other way comes Bus Boom. Bus Boom, as you can see, they will trap you on the sidelines. They will extend that defense out. They're not just going to sit back and be content. 
to play inside the three-point arc. And a nice drive and a layup by Elliott Menzel for two. Menzel is adding to his 51 points that he has scored so far in the two games of this tournament. Menzel had a huge game yesterday, a season-high 28 points. He's looked awfully comfortable here at the state tournament. Brett Douglas had it for a moment. Now they'll work the opposite side of the floor. Just underway, Class C2 championship here from the Devaney Center. John, I think it's very ironic that Ravenna is here in the state championship game with its youth. Three freshmen on the floor right now, I believe. And as for Freeman, when Mitchell and Bussman, they've been starting since they were freshmen, but they started their careers with one of the uh, worst seasons in Freeman history. They were building for the future. Those guys get here as seniors. Ravenna, meanwhile, here on the big stage with several youngsters. And we just saw the first real entry of Kyle Schlake into this game with that Big swat, however, Ravenna still has an opportunity. Three from the corner for the lead. And that's off the mark by Klosterman. However, Ravenna gets it right back. In and out three by Baronic. And Ravenna, they may be the smaller team, especially in the middle, but they are quick. And they've just got another opportunity, and our first foul of the game is going to be whistled against Ryan Busboom. And don't be surprised the fact that Ravenna sh is shooting threes early. That's what they do. They're a great shooting basketball team. That's why they're here. So they're not gun shy, and I think they'll stay true to their colors today and just try to make sure they hit some shots from beyond the arc. Adam Mingus, and now off to Klosterman. Here's a three on the way from Brett Douglas. Brett Douglas has not scored in the state tournament to this point. His first shot of the game goes down for a Ravenna lead, and there's that Ravenna sideline pressure. And now we're going to see head coach Paul Baronic as you take a look at Jim McLaughlin of the Falcons. Paul Baronic likes to rotate players in. They can play as many as 12 different guys. We've seen that this week. Generally, they'll play about 10 different guys, but very few guys stay in their warm-ups for the entire game. They will rotate a lot of people in, and that, of course, is true to their nature as the aggressive team. That was fun watching Douglas make that three-point, and you can tell the monkey got off his back. Great reaction by him. He's now sitting after the big shot. Yeah, he averages a little less than five points a game. He's more of a power presence, one of the tallest players on the floor, and there is a tie-up. It was a near travel. It's going to stay with Ravenna. Eric Rapp getting his hands on the ball. Thought that they might call a travel initially, but instead they say he was tied up. Either way, the possession arrow is going to change, but Ravenna will keep the ball. See Schlake starting to play out a little bit further there to guard against the three from the top. Here's a drive and score. Yeah, you mentioned pulling Schlake out of the paint. That freed up the lane for Veronica to drive and score. Good offensive execution by the Jays. And here comes that Ravenna defense one more time. From the corner, three is open. Three is no good, and we're going to have over the bat. Eric Johnson shooting from the corner. I really like how Ravenna is contesting every rebound. They may not have the size advantage with Schlake down low for Freeman, but Ravenna, regardless who's on the floor, everybody is trying to get after an offensive rebound. I believe the foul was on uh, Sean Payne. That is his first. He is now off the floor, and here comes Freeman into the offensive end. Busboom will try to enter it in for Schlake, and no dice. Mingus leads it up, and that's a travel. I think that whole thing was set up by the pass. Mingus's pass was a little off the mark to Josh Crowell, and by the time Crowell was able to collect himself, collect the ball, he wasn't able to collect himself. Took too many steps. That full court trap by Ravenna. Freeman doing, it, doing an excellent job breaking it. Haven't had too many troubles with it so far. Here we are, three and a half minutes into the game. Freeman's only taken two shots. They haven't had much of an opportunity. Ravenna had that one position where they got four different opportunities, and there's a drive and a score by Kyle Schlake. And Freeman within one. Mingus around to Crowell, into the corner. Air ball to three. And crashing to the deck was Trevor Cyborg. Now running with it on the break. Freeman layup, no, by Jordan Pella. And here come the Blue Jays. Will play a Ferranic pace. They always like to push the effort. 
time of possession, if there was such a category <laughs> in basketball, it's all in favor of Ravenna. It seems like the ball has been on this end of the floor for the majority of this first quarter. Douglas thought about another three, but thought better of it. Good ball movement, wide open three, and it rolls in and out. And there was Douglas tipping the ball out to his teammate underneath his Mingus for two. And so even though you're looking at a height disadvantage underneath, Ravenna right now dominating the boards, six to three in favor of the Blue Jays. What a great job they're doing on the offensive glass. You know, even if they're not able to get position and pull the ball down at first attempt, they're able to tip it back and give themselves a better chance of maybe corralling the basketball about 10 feet away from the hoop. And officially, by my count, that's four offensive rebounds early in this game for the Blue Jays. From the corner, three is short. An excellent box out there by Ravenna's Brett Douglas. Now Ravenna with a three-point lead. Drive in, that's Connor Baronic finds his wide open teammate, but short. They're doing a good job of getting open threes. They're just not knocking them down early on. They certainly are. It's to penetrate and kick. Somebody, whether it be Mingus, whether it be Baronic, takes the ball in the lane, kicks it out. That's creating the open looks. Unfortunately for the Jays, their past couple attempts from beyond the arc have not fallen. Busboom tried to rotate in through the lane, lost the basketball. Here come the Blue Jays. But a nice steal, good play, making up for it, Elliot Menzel. Now he gets poked from behind and he loses the ball again. Almost the exact same play on both ends of the floor. So now Mingus will reset the offense, coming up on two minutes to go. Quickly played first quarter here at the Devaney Center. This is different territory for Freeman too, John. The fact that the Falcons, uh, I, I, you could say, won easily in their first two games here at State. I'm curious to find out how they will handle this situation. Down by three with less than two minutes to play in the opening quarter. They took early leads in their first two games, so this is a different situation for the Falcons. Under two minutes to go in the first, Ravenna leads by three. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. Energy efficiency is important to us all. At Nebraska Public Power District, we're committed to helping everyone use less energy through new technologies like this compact fluorescent light bulb. Because when you reduce your energy costs, we all win. This message brought to you by the Nebraska Public Power District. Always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. Soy biodiesel from Nebraska soybeans lowers our dependence on foreign oil. It has properties that reduce engine wear. And it burns without harmfully polluting the atmosphere. The Nebraska Soybean Board encourages the use of soy biodiesel. The Ravenna student section cheering on their Blue Jays who lead by three in the early stages of this Class C2 championship game. John Bishop alongside Kevin Suits. Dan Hedman working the sidelines today for us as Freeman brings it into the front court. Falcons looking for the open three and it's Menzel who will take it from the corner. Nearly got the friendly carom. We saw a couple of shots yesterday hit from very high on that backboard and go through in some of our semifinal action. Not the case here at least for the Falcons. 90 seconds left here in the opening period. And again, really the early story on is how Ravenna is able to counter the size disadvantage that they face with Kyle Schlake in the middle and have out-rebounded and have in many ways out-hustled the Falcons to this point. Here's Busboom driving to the hole. He'll go to the line and shoot two. Good, strong, aggressive take by Busboom on that sequence. You know, Freeman should actually be thankful that they're only down by three at this point in time considering you know, like you said, John, they're being out hustled, they're being out rebounded. And free, uh, Ravenna has had several open looks from beyond the arc that have not fallen. You, you get a couple of those shots to go down. This could very well be a nine point, 10 point game. Well, the disparity there again is Freeman head coach Jim McLaughlin. The disparity in rebounds right now, it's eight to six, and which doesn't sound like a big disadvantage, but you look at the number of shots taken. Ravenna's already taken 13 shots to Freeman six. It's been one and out for the most part for Freeman and they have the basketball. Missed them both. Neither free throw goes down for Boston straight. He's a great shooter. 
Seven for our score. Still yeah. a drive basket and count it. Adam Mingus to the line for one more. Right through, and he got past Eric Rapp, who was a little late getting there. And he converts. It's now a six-point Ravenna lead. And again, and we are seeing every substitution for Paul Baronic. It's at least two players, sometimes three. We've even seen four, and that's why. They take it all the way in. Nice follow, though, on the miss by Schlake. The follow by Busboom, and Freeman within four. Busboom just trailing the play, was able to get an open look. Good job of maintaining body control. Did come down with the basketball, still scored. Connor Baronic enters the game point-wise for the first time today. He scored 21 yesterday. He just swished the three. He's young, but he will shoot threes, and he will shoot them from almost anywhere on the floor. They say he has NBA-style range. That one was at least a good foot and a half behind the three-point arc, and there's a turnover against the Falcons. They're sixth of the game, and Ravenna will get a chance to likely play for the last shot here in the final 27 seconds. As you take a look at how far that three came in, really beautiful shot, and yeah, I got bad news for you. He's got three years left to play. Yeah, he's a baby face right yeah, now, yes, but Baronic certainly has range. And you know, he's a coach's son. A lot of times those guys grow up around the basketball, and he is certainly no exception. The future looks bright for Baronic. And true to form, playing for the last shot. Mingus looks to drive. Nice backdoor cut, waits for the commit draws the foul. Good patient play by Eric Johnson, waiting for Schleich to commit to the air, and he went up strong, draws the foul. They are really coming at Schleich. Doesn't seem like they're scared very much by the big fellow. Schleich standing six foot nine. Ravenna, the tallest player they usually have in the basketball game. Sean Payne at times, he's six four, but you take Payne out of the mix. Uh, they're usually going to go 6-2 at, at best, which is giving up seven inches. Well, as we mentioned, Ravenna's played a tough schedule this year. Their losses were to Grand Island Central Catholic, Wood River, and Minden. Also, St. Paul and Adams Central in their conference tournament, the Lou Platt. Not to mention beating Axtell yesterday. So they are battle-tested, and more than likely, they face teams much larger than they. Will they get off the last shot? It would count if it goes. But Eric Rapp hits off the front of the rim, and that's the end of one. A good first quarter for the Blue Jays. They lead Freeman by nine. Programming on NET television is made possible in part by U.S. Bank, fulfilling their commitment to serve customers wherever they are on their terms, providing a full range of banking services at 57 branch offices and more than 100 ATMs located conveniently across Nebraska. Wherever you go, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, you'll find us. Programming made possible by Time Warner Cable. Supporting local performing arts and arts education with projects like Adventure Lead and our annual Arts Immersion Project. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. Center where the team huddles are reflecting the score. Event up 15 to 6, and head coach Paul Baronic saying, you know what, good start. Now we have to finish. Uh, Jim McLaughlin in the uh uh, Freeman Huddle says, you know what, guys, we need to go down to the low post. That's what they do right there, guys. It's 15 to 8. Ryan Busboom doing exactly what the coach ordered, but here comes Ravenna trying the long three. And we'll have a foul on the rebound, and that's going to go against the Blue Jays. That'll be their third. And it's going to be whistled against Brett Douglas. You take a look at Brett. Made that early three to get Ravenna on the scoreboard, and they pretty much own the first period of play. Now into the front court, the Falcons down by seven. They had the first lead at 2 nothing, but have trailed ever since. Menzel will take the long three and come up short. 
Ravenna foul and bonking heads. Ryan Busboom will come away rubbing his head. Yeah, Mingus's chin, I believe, went right into Busboom's head. Busboom was kind of sandwiched between two Ravenna players. Depends on the contact. I would I, I almost would rather be the head, not the chin in that situation. I think so too. Oh, there's a huge block, nearly a second one by Klosterman. And Ravenna's gonna come away with it. Klosterman with a swat. Here come the Blue Jays. Douglas thought about another three. Well, he had one earlier not. Why not try another one, Brett? They're sagging off of him. He's gonna kick it. They don't trust it. They don't they think they think they fine. Go ahead. Ravenna and the style they play, they have a lot of good shooters on this team. It's not just a couple. They all have to shoot. There's another backdoor cut. This time Mingus has to gather himself up, makes a nice spin move to the basket. That's Those backdoor cuts are pretty impressive so far, but that was a good move by Mingus to make that play by himself. Also, with Mingus, that shot was not very easy. Spinning and fading away. Nice kiss off the glass. Same thing we see on the other end. And Kyle Schlake asserting himself here. Schlake. With his second field goal, and it's 17 to 10. But getting the ball down into the post, we'll see if Schlake becomes more of a factor in this game. Probably could have come up with it there, but Brett Douglas gathers up the loose ball and scores. He's got five, and Ravenna's up by nine again. Well, Freeman's really going to have to fight through this because that was a good defensive sequence by the Falcons. They stripped the ball. It looked like they were going to get the turnover, but instead the ball bounced right into Douglas's hands, who scored. So. Freeman down by nine. They just got to hang tough right now and settle down. I think the breaks could maybe start going their way, but they're clearly not happening early. Foul's going to be called on Adam Mingus. Good break of the press that time, and that put Elliot Menzo in position to nearly score. Instead, he'll go to the line to shoot two. That's the fifth team foul against Ravenna here in the first half. Ravenna's really playing with some gusto here early, aren't they, John? No doubt about it. I mean, they're, they're not intimidated by the atmosphere. You expect a team that has three key freshman contributors, but Paul Baronic has been in this situation before. They were runner-up in 2006, state champions in 2005, third place in last year's state tournament. And there's something to be said for being able to coach at the big stage. It's not an easy thing. You got to factor in media timeouts. You got to factor in crowd setting, managing your team away from basketball. So we'll be back. Veronica. We will be back in just a moment here on 1011 and NET Sports. College doesn't just happen. You have to be a pain in a good way. Find someone to help you, like your mom, dad, guidance counselor, or teacher. Keep asking until you find someone who will. There were adults in my life who made sure I took the right classes in high school and helped me apply for scholarships. Thanks to them, I got into a great school. Someone will help you too. All you have to do is ask. This is one time where it's okay to be a pain. You're on vacation in the mountains. You've got the kids, the dog, and your tent. Your son says, hiking is lame, so you try rock climbing. It ends up being harder than it looks. Now you're in the hospital wishing you'd stayed home. But you've got Blue Cross and Blue Shield, so you know you're covered even though you're out of state. So you relax, which is why you went on vacation in the first place. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska. One less thing to worry about. Quick stat review, Ravenna shooting 39% from the floor, Freeman 36. Turnovers though have been a difference. Freeman six to two, they have committed more turnovers. Rebounds have evened up at 10 apiece. But it's Ravenna with the stat that counts most. A seven point lead. Connor Baronic made it three his last time around. Now he'll rotate to the top of the screen. Ravenna really uh, staying away from the paint right now, working mainly on the perimeter offensively. Crowell and now it's Mingus again. Ravenna taking their time on this possession, waiting for that wide open three, and there it is. Swish. Eric Johnson scored 35 in the district final. He sometimes is a little gun shy, according to his head coach, shooting the three, but he has the shot, and he was a nice looking one there. Here comes Bus Boom, swatted from behind, out of bounds. Almost looked like Payne got his hand on the wrist, but instead it's a clean block, according to the officials. 
We'll take a look at it again. Be the judge for yourself. Oh yeah. Definitely all ball there. And they'll call the travel. On Ryan Busboom. The defense by Johnson. Yes, Busboom. The little brother of Danny Busboom, who, you know, we talked a lot about how Freeman as a consolidated effort. You take a look at Danny right there, she, here watching her little brother in the stands today. She helped lead the Freeman girls to success in both girls basketball and volleyball, which was kind of a uh, an offshoot of all this merger between Adams and Philly, which is now 11 years old. The boys basketball teams never really capitalized on that until now. They were finally able to make it. And as you mentioned, just a couple of years ago, they had their worst season ever, four wins in 21 games. That's when Busboom and uh, Mintzel were both freshmen. They were building for the future, and here is the future right in front of our eyes. Danny do it, did a nice job for us, too, on NET Sports of helping with the uh, volleyball championships this year. Danny, of course, the former Nebraska volleyball standout. What a great basketball player she was, John. Yeah, she really was. That was a good second sport for her. <laughs> she might have been able to play it at some college level, but obviously she was too good a volleyball player to pass that up. Big rebound there by Kyle Schlake, and Ravenna with a 10-point lead will go back on defense here. Schlake this time, well, now he'll move inside after taking it at the point. Now they'll enter it in low. And that's where Freeman has a decided advantage. You know, coming with six points. Coming into the game, you knew exactly that's what Freeman needed to do to be successful. They've gone away from it at times, but for the most part of the second quarter, they've been very determined to get the ball down low in the post. Eight point Ravenna lead, under four minutes to go here in the first half. Class C2 championship. What about the open three? Instead, didn't take it. Now Sean Payne and Adam Mingus will look back at his head coach and call a timeout. First timeout taken by Ravenna. Comes with 3.38 to go here in the first half, 22 to 14 in favor of the Blue Jays. Courtside again, here's Dan Hedman. You know what, guys? It's been an interesting road for head coach Jim McLaughlin of uh, Freeman. He started five years ago at the school. He actually was a Lincoln native at the time, would commute over to Adams. And uh, when he was there, he'd stay with Ken Cook, the girls' head coach. Of course, Cook, over 700 wins. He said, uh, McLaughlin said of Cook, he really helped me get my start. And uh, what a start it's been in the state championship finals in just his fifth season with the Freeman Falcons. Boy, you can't ask for a better mentor than Ken Cook. What a legend he is. And he is a regular. I, I, I seem to see him more as a, a spectator than I do as a coach. He's at a lot of Nebraska women's games. He loves basketball. Great coach. And uh, if you're Jim McLaughlin, why not learn from one of the best? It's almost like the Bo Pelini, uh Tom Osborne dynamic. Having somebody work right down the hall from you that you can just tap into that resource anytime you want. I'm sure Ken Cook. He's offered a few suggestions a time or two. No doubt about it. Knows a thing or two about basketball, <laughs> to say the least. I want to know how Ken Cook is as a uh, host, though. Were they cooking for Coach McLaughlin? I'm not how sure. did that all play out? <laughs> well, I have to ask him if we get a Must chance. Must have been nice. Ravenna, though, Coach McLaughlin still hoping that Freeman can carve into this lead. They've trailed since. Almost since the opening bell, they had the early lead, but then fell behind three to two and haven't led since. That was in the first two and a half minutes of the game. Three on the way is short. And a nice box out by Kyle Schlake, allowing Eric Rapp to come up with the easy rebound. Now Freeman with the offense. Excellent box out by Schlake. Fantastic position. And allowed the rebound to go right into the hands of Eric Rapp. A look inside for Schlake, a turnaround move. Nice touch. Kyle Schlake really has a nice touch. And he's starting to get into this game now. He's got eight of the 16 points. And see, now that presence is making Ravenna think twice before going up with the shot. That's as close as we've been here. Freeman down now six. Coming up on two minutes to go as a look back for instruction from the bench. And Freeman's gone on this little run by getting the ball inside. If they try to enter it again, and they did try again, but this time Eric Johnson showing his hops, getting off the ground, and swatting it out of bounds. 2.05 left before the intermission. Ravenna leads by six. 
Did you know two out of five Nebraska high school students drink? Parents, enough is enough. Programming on NET television is provided in part by Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. By Time Warner Cable, supporting local high school athletics and arts education in the communities we serve. And by Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org. At the Devaney Center, final 205 of this first half. Freeman starting to carve in. Ravenna led by as much as 10, but a mini 4 0 run here by the Falcons. And we'll see if they can do a little bit more with it. Elliott Menzel with the basketball. Long three on the way by Busboom is too strong. And here come the Blue Jays. They want to run. They've got an opening and a nice seal. Great seal by Brett Douglas. He sealed off Kyle Schlake and left a wide open alley to the basket for Klosterman. And a charge. And scraping off the deck. Adam Mingus was just taking his 26th charge of the year. But watch on the offensive end. There's the seal. Great seal by Brett Douglas and the basket by Klosterman. And then on the defensive end, Adam Mingus took a school record 20 charges this year, has now taken six here in the state tournament. Almost averaging a, averaging a charge a game. And there he is on the assist. Another backdoor cut, this time beating the freshman Connor Garonic. And just like that, the mini rally is done. And Ravenna's back up by 10. Schlake wants to go up strong. And that time a little too strong off the glass. Ravenna has really picked up the tempo here over the last minute. And it all started with that nice little series on the offensive end and defensive ends for the Blue Jays. Not, not this time. He's going to be victim of the charge. Elliott Mensel taking the charge there for Freeman. How quiet has Mensel been here in this opening half? Very quiet. He does have four points and four rebounds, but he's also turned the ball over four times. As you take a look, Adam Mingus now committing the charge, if you will, and that's his second foul. He'll likely sit for the rest of the half, which has only 55 seconds left in it. As you can see, a lot of the same guys on the floor. Freeman not substituting nearly as much as Ravenna. Three on the way. It's no good by Rapp. Offensive try again, no. But free throws coming up for Jordan Pella. Pella, too, has been quiet in this one. He has not scored yet, and he averages eight points and five rebounds a game. As you take a look at the action underneath the basket. And there's the half. But Freeman not making their free throws. They are now two of five. Yeah, Freeman also from beyond the arc today. 0 of seven as of right now. So they're having some shooting struggles, whether it be from the line or behind the three-point line. Second one, no good. So now Ravenna may be content to play for the last shot. 33 seconds left. And Eric Johnson's going to wait for Pella to come at him. Ravenna has looked really good in this opening half. I just like with the confidence that they play. It's strange to see a young team play with so much confidence, especially in a game this big. Less than 10, who's going to take that last shot? Drive to the baseline, a little high arc or no. Outlet down the floor with two left, and it's going to go out of bounds. That's going to end the first half of play. They tried the long outlet, Hail Mary pass, but could not connect. And Ravenna goes to the locker room. Leading by 10, they dominated the first quarter. 
and then the last two minutes of this third quarter also belong to them and that's a big difference in this game here so far Ravenna leads it 26 to 16 and their head coach Paul Baronic is standing by with Dan. All right, thanks, Coach. Your team up 10 on the top seed going into half. You got to be happy. Yeah, we're pretty happy, uh, but it ain't going to be happy time until uh, the next half's over. Uh, we know we got some work to do. They're too good of a team, and uh, they've got a lot of firepower, and they're just scary. All right, thanks very much, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you, guys. Ravenna, Ravenna leads 26 16 right now, headed to halftime. We'll be back with first half stats after this. Hey, college doesn't just happen. You have to push yourself as you go through high school. Don't be afraid to take classes like Algebra 2, Biology, or a foreign language. They can help raise your ACT score and prepare you for college. I wasn't the smartest kid in high school, but I took the top classes and I passed. So what are you waiting for? Push yourself over to your counselor's office and sign up for them. They won't be easy, but you'll be glad you did. You're on vacation in the mountains. You've got the kids, the dog, and your tent. Your son says, hiking is lame, so you try rock climbing. It ends up being harder than it looks. Now you're in the hospital wishing you'd stayed home. But you've got Blue Cross and Blue Shield, so you know you're covered, even though you're out of state. So you relax, which is why you went on vacation in the first place. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska. One less thing to worry about. Programming on NET television is provided in part by U.S. Bank, measuring success through performance, pride, products, and people, backed by a five-star service guarantee. U.S. Bank, member FDIC. By Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska, one less thing to worry about. By Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, grants, and college planning services. And by Nebraska Office of Highway Safety, please remember that if you drink and drive, you lose. There are more ways than ever to enjoy your favorite NET programming, all broadcast digitally. NET One and NET HD provide locally produced specials and documentaries about the issues that are important to you. NET Two offers PBS World, a 24-hour digital channel showing locally produced and PBS documentaries. On NET's third digital channel, Create, advice on cooking, gardening, and home improvement. Visit netnebraska.org to find out how to see them in your area. Each year we all wish for that great looking garden or the best tasting tomato. Hi, I'm Kim Todd, host of Backyard Farmer. Join me and a panel of UNL Extension experts each week as we answer your lawn and garden questions. You'll find out how to get rid of it, keep it, grow it, do it better than ever with help from Backyard Farmer. Plus, Backyard Farmer Extra answers all of your email and your letters. Coming in April to NET1. At halftime of each championship game, we recognize the 10-11 coaches All-State team. Ballot forms were sent to coaches throughout Nebraska. 10-11 tallied those votes, and here is your 2009 Class C2 10-11 coaches All-State team. Ryan Busboom, Ryan Dolezal, Adam Mingus, Ezra Schantz, and Jim Wilmus. Good balance from top to bottom in the Class C2 team. Yeah, and there was a lot of good players. Some of them we're seeing on this floor that could have also received some recognition but of course we see Mingus and uh, Ryan Busboom here today Jim Wilmus uh, yesterday played for uh, Archbishop Bergen really good job by Jim and his teammates this year after they lost Wes Wilkins or they lost uh, their big gun last year right. who uh, was so crucial to their run as state champions Wilmus took up the uh, mantle for Fremont Bergen and uh, averaged nearly 16 points a game Ezra Shantz of Laurel Concord Ryan Dozal of East Butler couldn't make it here to the state tournament but a really good uh, looking Class C2 state championship yeah, building on Jim team. Wilmus a lot of people thought that Archbishop Bergen wouldn't even be a championship contender after losing Wes Eichmeyer Wes but Eichmeyer, what a yeah. fantastic job that he did just picking up the slack and there wasn't much of a drop off especially considering the fact that Bergen moved from D1 to class Class C2 this year. So excellent job by Wilmus and the rest of the honorees on the Class C2 All-State team. We'll be back with more halftime activities, including your first half statistics. Ravenna leads by 10 in the Class C2 final. 
Programming on NET television is provided in part by the Dr. Tom and Dorothy Hallstrom Inspire Nebraska Athletics Endowment. Hello, I'm Jenny Herstein, and thanks to viewers like you, we've increased our membership base by over 25% this past year. Your support is vitally important to NET. Your gift provides the funds we need to produce and purchase your favorite programs year after year. Thank you again for your loyal support. We knew the battle was going to come. I figured I could make a stand here. We are united in one common cause. He had a vision. These lands are ours. Here we shall remain. Five epic stories of courage and resilience. We shall remain. Coming in April to NET1. Boom! <laughs> hey, hey, where are you going? You can't get by me. I'm number one in this class. I rule this lab. I'm number one. Hey, hey, I don't think so. Yes! Weather! I am a king! Woo! You wouldn't do it there. Woo! So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. What? Jerk. Back here in Class C2, Ravenna leads Freeman 26 to 16. Let's take a look at your first half numbers. Ravenna, as you would expect, shooting it just a little bit better, but the difference has been at least they, they put up 14 threes and only made three, but that's better than Freeman. 0 of 7 early on. The rebounds have started to go Freeman's way as we have started to see the presence of Kyle Schlake in this game, but those turnovers a big difference. 9 to 3 on the turnover ledger as Freeman down in the game have committed more turnovers. You heard Paul Baronic, the head coach of Ravenna, with the interview at halftime saying that he really fears this Freeman team. It's almost as if he's expecting some kind of a run. You've got to believe that at some point you're going to see Menzel and Busboom start to hit those shots from the outside because right now most of the offense has come from Schlake in the paint. And I think Baronics may be afraid of the fact that they're 0 of 7 right now. They're going to hit their shots at some point in time. You would think that they will. 0 of 7, that trend might not continue. We'll be back with more halftime activities. The second half coming up in just a minute. But first, I got to look at my highlights. As you take a look, there's Schlake getting involved right away on the defensive and offensive ends. He has been the big one so far for Freeman. But for Ravenna, well, they've been doing it with some defense as well. And here's a, they have executed this play about three times in this game. Good play there by Adam Mingus feeding Connor Baronic. Now we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Stay right there. Second half action is straight ahead. Ravenna and Freeman. Hi, I'm Rod Bates, general manager at NET, inviting you to the 2009 NET Governor's Premiere. This is the third year collaborating with the governor's office to showcase important stories by and about Nebraskans. Join us April 25th at 6 Central at the Strategic Air and Space Museum for a special preview of Homemade Astronaut, the Clay Anderson story. As soon as the engines lit off, man, there's, there's no thinking about anything else except the enormousness of the whole thing. I was born to do this. Lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis to assemble the Clay Anderson and his wife Susan will be our guests of honor. Reserve your tickets today. I hope to see you at the 2009 NET Governor's Premiere. Ragtime, America's music. NET television takes you through a musical journey of this truly American art form. Listen to the musical stylings of Nebraska's own Jack Oliva. Watch NET's production of Ragtime Cabaret. Coming soon to NET1. Welcome back. 
back to the Devaney Center where Freeman trails by 10 at the half. Coach Jim McLaughlin joins me. And Coach, two of your studs, uh, Bus Boom and Mensel, held to eight points in the first half. They had 44 in your last game. What do you need to do to get the offense going? Well, we need to have better ball movement, number one. Uh, you know, I think that uh, probably a little too much dribble, and we need to pass the ball, rotate it, and reverse it a little bit more. We're doing a good job looking inside, uh, getting points in the lane, but they're capable of knocking down shots, and they'll come out this second half and hopefully bury a couple to get us going. All right, good luck in the second half. Thanks for stopping by. Freeman trails by 10 at the half. We'll have second half action when we return. Programming made possible by Time Warner Cable. Supporting local educators by providing free cable connections to public, private, and parochial schools in our area. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. Soy biodiesel from Nebraska soybeans lowers our dependence on foreign oil. It has properties that reduce engine wear. And it burns without harmfully polluting the atmosphere. The Nebraska Soybean Board encourages the use of soy biodiesel. Programming on NET television is provided in part by Nebraska Public Power District. Always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. By Time Warner Cable, supporting local high school athletics and arts education in the communities we serve. And by Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org. You are watching NET1 and NET HD. We are ready for the second half. John Bishop alongside Kevin Suits, Dan Hedman, and the production crews of 1011 and NET Sports here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Class C2 right off the get to Riley Barana, the junior, with his first points of the day. And Ravenna enjoys their biggest lead at 13. It's right out of the shoots. Ravenna fearless. Who's on the floor? Who's going to come up with it? There'll be a tie up, and Freeman will retain possession of the basketball. But Ravenna again shuttling players in and out. The more aggressive team on both ends of the floor. And it has shown here so far. Well, I was really impressed with the way Ravenna fought off that Freeman rally midway through the second quarter. Little give and go action right there by. Bus boom and Mensel, but Mensel does not finish on the layup. And now Ravenna can even build further this 13 point lead. Freeman has been off their game so far. About the only offense they've really had is Schlake. Number 35 down there in the low blocks. Rolls in and out that three. Halfway that down. Been, that could have been a devastating three early on in this second half against the Falcons. That would have doubled up Freeman right now. It's 29-16. Would have made it 32-16. Ravenna, look at how quickly they get from one side to the other. And finally, the three goes down. Eric Rapp on good ball rotation. Closes it to a 10-point gap. Good ball fake sidestep. Went up and drains the three, the first of the ball game for Freeman. Rapp only averages three and a half points a game, and it took him to get the Falcons off the long distance Schneid. So far, Menzel and Busboom have not been able to connect from long range. Again, through the lane, up strong, Mingus. Mingus floated high. Menzel was guarding him. He went towards the top of the key, thinking that Mingus was going to stay on the perimeter. Instead, he shot towards the basket, got free down low. Menzel had a good look at it. But the layup, no good, and Schlake cannot follow up. So now Ravenna back the other way. Another long three, and another make. Riley Baronic, two for two and a half, and a timeout Freeman, as Ravenna has come out strong once again. If this were fought by rounds, Ravenna
Ravenna has won every one. We're back after this. Did you know two out of five Nebraska high school students drink? And that 43% of the Nebraska high school students drank last month? Programming on NET television is made possible in part by U.S. Bank. Across Nebraska, the nation, and everywhere in between, U.S. Bank provides financial, trust, and investment services to individuals, large corporations, and small businesses. Wherever you go, whether it's in person, on the phone, or on the World Wide Web, you'll find U.S. Bank. You'll find more than 50,000 U.S. bankers, home of the five-star service guarantee. Freeman coming into today has scored 133 points in this state tournament. Their lowest output of the season was 42. And that came in their lone loss against Bruning Davenport. But right now they're at 19 and struggling mightily from the floor. 32% one of eight and their one make from three point range has been in this half. Unfortunately, Ravenna has picked up the pace. They've hit two of their first four threes here in the second half, and they're up by 15. Yeah, Freeman has had some breakdowns defensively. More importantly, they've never really been able to get Elliott Mitchell on track offensively. One of the reasons they've been held to just 19 points right now. Eric Rapp, who made that lone three, looking for an opening. But again, Ravenna, they extend that defense out. They don't give you a lot of free looks even outside the arc. You've got to be good and disciplined passing and reversing the ball to get that shot. And there's a nice baseline jumper there by Ryan Busboom, a badly needed basket. Busboom hadn't scored in a while. He's now got six. And here comes Ravenna working their motion offense. And the last couple sequences have looked pretty good. Got some free shots from beyond the arc. Riley Bronick coming alive here in this quarter. Mingus looking and has it poked away. Menzel will try to take it between defenders. A little out of control, and it's going to roll down and count the basket. Quite frankly, I don't think that was the best play in the world that Menzel could make, but he somehow made it. It's a jaw-dropping play, though. Pulls it off his hip and somehow gets it to rattle in. It was good defensive positioning if you watch. First going between the defenders and then Mingus sealing him off from having that straight line shot to the basket, but somehow Menzel literally shooting from the hip. Showed some confidence on that too to try to dribble between both defenders. That might be the sequence that Freeman needs, especially from Elliott Menzel. It's back to a 10 point game. But a foul on Menzel. That's his first. Really, not much for fouls in this game. No one in any serious foul trouble except for Adam Mingus, who has three. Mingus will trigger it in for the Blue Jays. They have led most of the way. It's been a very clean ball game so far in terms of fouls and how it's been called. Been very consistent so far, and the officials have really let them play today. Rotating around. And the block, but a foul. The block by Schlake. They're going to call the foul on Rapp, who was helping out defensively. And Rapp gave him a little bit of body as Mingus was falling away. You'll see the contact there. Actually, it was the hand that hit his elbow. And the first free throw is up and in. Ravenna perfect from the line so far as Jim McLaughlin is talking it over with one of our officials. And once again, Paul Baronic going to the bench and rotating three more players in. So far, they've played 10. They played 12 in their quarterfinal win over Sutherland. 
in and out. We've seen a number of those today on threes, especially balls that looked like they were headed down and coming back up. And it seems on it's on this one hoop. It's over to our right. It's the hoop that Freeman is not shooting at, and the one that Kyle Schlink just scored in. And it's a nine-point game in single digits. Three on the way. Short. Ball nearly tapped in through the cylinder by Freeman. And then the big hack, and it almost went down. Credit to uh, Tyson Anderson following his miss there. He was the one that was able to knock the ball free. It landed in Klosterman's hands as Klosterman will now head to the free throw line. I think it really all started with the shot. It was a quick trigger, but Anderson did a, did a great job flying in the lane, keeping the basketball alive on the rebound attempt. John Klosterman, 6'2", junior at the line, who averages 12 points a game. He's the second leading scorer for Ravenna. He's been held to two points here so far. Three players averaged in double figures for the Blue Jays, but because they have so many players, scoring usually gets distributed around. Today, the leading scorer for the Blue Jays is Adam Mingus with 12. Quickly again down the floor, here comes Menzel. Elliot Menzel starting to assert himself here in the second half. He's got nine, and the lead's down to eight. And Freeman has done just a marvelous job breaking the press the entire ball game. It's been when they've been in the half-court set that they've had some troubles. That's true. Ravenna's press really has not been that much of a factor. And a nice strip. Ball taken away. Menzel's going to drive all the way down again and score. And Menzel is starting to get jacked up. Pumps his fist to the student section. It's a six-point game. Yeah, you had a feeling that three-point play when he shot from the hip. That was the momentum shifter for Elliott Mitchell. He's played with so much more confidence now. It's a six-point ball game, 36-30, mainly because Elliott Mitchell has really come alive. And Trevor Cyborg called over the back on the miss. And Freeman now can make it a three or a four-point game. It hasn't been this close in a while. It got down to six midway through the second quarter. But then the final two minutes belong to the Blue Jays. Mintzel has done his damage in transition as Freeman has had uh, few troubles breaking the press. Maybe a bit of some here. And they're going to need to call a timeout or get the ball in the front court, and they can do not either. Ten-second call, and you can see the frustration on Jim McLaughlin as for the first time today, Ravenna's press is a momentum changer, possibly. Let's see what happens on the offensive end. Let's see if the Jays can just settle into that motion offense again. Look for an open shot on the perimeter, perhaps. Mingus wanted to drive, kicks back out. Ravenna. Look how Ravenna spreads the floor. Really, nobody's in the lane. Instead, they're just moving all the time away from the basketball. Yeah. Doing a good job pulling Sh Schlake out of the lane as well. Yeah, they don't play off as many screens sometimes as you would expect. But when they do, it's usually effective because there is such good spacing. They, this team is very well coached. Instead, they do a lot of those backdoor cuts, John. That's what they're waiting on. They're being extremely patient. Good job by doing that. There's no reason to hurry. They're up by six. And just by slowing the game down, it's kind of taking the Freeman crowd out of it because the Falcons fans were all just on their feet after those flurry of mental points. So fantastic job by Ravenna to remain poised and just run a slower offense, which is has its positive in many regards. Fourth team foul on Freeman, second foul on Elliott Mensel. And off the inbounds, here's a cut through the lane, knocks it home. It was that backdoor cut. Johnson saw just a bit of a seam, hit it, caught, shot, nailed it for two. And a turnaround as Ravenna saw their lead dwindle to six, but used that full court press to force the turnover. And now they're up by eight. Entry. Schlake was double teamed, lost it on the dribble. Yeah, that was new. Ravenna really collapsed there. The double team. Schlake wasn't uh, really expecting that, the reason for the turnover. Now, ball rotation, pull up jumper, no. And the rebound out of there by Busboom. Here comes Mensel. Mensel's been the fire plug here in the second half for the Falcons. They'll enter it in, and not quite. Jordan Pella, though, will go to the line to shoot two. And that'll be the third foul of the second half against the Blue Jays. And the first foul on Johnson. 
Well, as we mentioned earlier, averages eight points and nearly five rebounds a game, but until that made free throw, had not scored. You think of him more in an enforcer type capacity, the more physical of the interior players, and then using the height of Schlake to gain some measure of advantage, but it's been a quiet game so far for Pella. That's a tough matchup for any C2 team when you're going up against Freeman with those two big bodies down low. Back to six again, and we are coming up on a minute to play, and Ravenna looks to be content to let some clock run here in the third. And Freeman's going to extend the defense out. Right I really now, like how been token. Mingus always seems to be in control for Ravenna. He has the basketball right now. He's the floor general, and I think that's who a lot of these youngsters have looked to for leadership the entire season. So credit to Adam Mingus for the job he's done just leading this Ravenna squad throughout the year. John. It's a team that's grown over the course of the season, too. Well, and they, naturally they have to because you've got so many freshmen. That's why you look at Ravenna. They have five losses on the year, but those were almost expected with the fact that they play so many youngsters. Well, three of the five, and there's a five-second call. The count was on, and frustration for Paul Baranek as Elliot Menzel was within the zone. The official had the count on, and they call Ravenna for five seconds, and so Freeman... That was kind of a sneaky call there because it didn't, they weren't really putting pressure on the ball, but just enough to engage that five second count. And the officials are usually very emphatic, holding the hands out wide when the count's not on and being very deliberate with the count when it is on. Now, on the give, drive to the basket. Menzel is stripped. Ball tipped around, Schlake has it. Still time and he scores, four point game. Schlake there to clean it all up, but a good job defensively by, by Sean Payne previously when he stripped Menzel. And a steal. Menzel takes it away. One second left. Has it poked from behind, and there won't be a final shot as bodies go crashing to the floor. And my friends, I have a feeling these final eight minutes are going to be exciting. We're back with the Class C2 fourth quarter after this. Programming on NET television is provided in part by U.S. Bank, measuring success through performance, pride, products, and people, backed by a five-star service guarantee. U.S. Bank, member FDIC. By Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska, one less thing to worry about. By Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, grants, and college planning services. And by Nebraska Office of Highway Safety. Please remember that if you drink and drive, you lose. We knew the battle was going to come. I figured I could make a stand here. We are united in one common cause. He had a vision. <laughs> These lands are ours. Here we shall remain. Five epic stories of courage and resilience. We shall remain. Coming in April to NET1. We told you early in the third quarter, if this were scored by rounds, Ravenna would have won all three rounds. But in the latter stages of round number three, Freeman came back with a couple of big uppercuts thrown by Elliott Menzel. And Freeman gets the third quarter. But now we get to the final period. Freeman down four, Ravenna with the basketball. Now the pressure's on Ravenna right now to withstand this rally and just settle down. You got to wonder how they're going to be able to do that. They've got youngsters on the floor, so if you're Paul Baronic, you're just hoping that these youngsters play with a little confidence and they don't lock up. Johnson wants to drive, and he's going to get the hand check call. Still a few fouls away from free throws, so. Yeah, but as, for, as of right now, Freeman with five team fouls, Ravenna with three. That one whistled against Jordan Pella. And that is his first. He is substituted for. And Ravenna will inbound. Gets it into Klosterman. And again, Ravenna will pull it back. You wonder how the freshman will respond here in the pressure situation of a state championship. 
This very young Ravenna team, just a couple of seniors, Eric Johnson and Adam Mingus. That's Johnson with it. Now hands it off to one of the freshmen. Now it's Klosterman. Douglas nearly traveled there. His foot gave way, but fortunately it was not his pivot foot. Ball stripped away, taken away by Rapp. Rapp feeds underneath, and he'll go to the line to shoot two, and he went hard into the basket support. Elliot Menzel, he is up. Gives a little reassurance to the students that he's okay off the steal by Rapp. Watch the collision with Menzel in the hoop. Good thing that thing is padded. The tough collision. Some Ravenna fans were maybe wanting a travel on that. He didn't put a dribble down. Instead, caught, took his few se steps, and went up for the layup. But he misses the first free throw. That's his first miss from the foul line, but as a team, Freeman is 5 of 10. This is the closest we've been since the first quarter, a three-point game. Mingus wants to take it all by himself, and it's stripped away by Busboom on a nice defensive play. Just swatted the ball free. Loose, and who's going to be in possession of the ball? Ravenna is. That skip pass, Rapp could not come up with it. And the call goes for Ravenna. That was a great defensive play by Busboom. The strip and steal. Unfortunately for the Falcons, they weren't, weren't able to even get a shot off on their chance off the uh, turnover. Ravenna has seen a lead that was once at one point 15. Down to three. Five second count is on. Johnson needs to do something with it. Being hounded right now in a timeout, Paul Veronic as Elliot Menzel was putting all kinds of pressure on Eric Johnson. Timeout taken by Paul Veronic and Ravenna. They have three remaining. Freeman has four. And as we mentioned, fouls right now not really an issue. Five against Freeman, four against the Ravenna Blue Jays. Down courtside one more time. Here's Dan. Hey guys, joined now by uh, Drake Baronic. He's the son of Ravenna head coach, and you also have a brother on the team, so you're holding your breath over here. Yeah, I was a little bit in a better mood during the third quarter when we were up big. Now I'm getting a little nervous, but uh, hopefully we can pull it off. What's your dad telling him in the huddle? Um, pull it off. Uh, we've been here before. Uh, my senior year, we were sitting in this position. We ended up losing. Hopefully things turn around this time and they get to win here tonight. So but you know what it's like to win a state title too. You won one in 05. Yeah, it's a pretty good feeling. I uh, would like to have two, but maybe my brothers can get one for me. As we wrap up here, you're playing at UNK right now. You were the uh, player of the year runner-up in the in the RMAC. Just yeah. talk about how the uh, season's going. Uh, we're done now, but uh, things didn't go quite as good as we wanted it to. But next year, we got everybody coming back pretty much, so hopefully we can turn it around and get back to where it was. All right, it's just a two-point game, or a one-point game right now, 38-37. We'll throw it back to you guys as Ravenna is clinging to a one-point lead. All right, thanks, Dan. And it's this time Ryan Busboom, who has seen Elliot Menzel be the star here in the second half. Here's a big three, but it's short by Connor Baronic. That was Drake's younger brother all the way through. Menzel this time, dish! And Freeman has the lead for the first time since early in the game. What a great pass by Elliot Menzel. He was moving down the floor with a full head of steam at the last second, dished it off, and Pella finished. Oh, NBA three, bang! Oh, 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 oh. doctor, what a play! Connor Baronic, we told you, he can hit those NBA distance threes, cold-blooded, and Ravenna's back up by two, but back the other way, here comes Freeman. Wow! Wow is right. Talk about a fresh He wants it again. Oh, he took another one. Holy cow. That one was about two feet further than the last. He was jumping about four feet off the ground trying to get the Ravenna crowd on its feet. He's a freshman. He's not supposed to do that at this state tournament. But it's a retaliation by Eric Rapp. And put on your seatbelts. We're going for a ride, Ravenna. And Freeman, what a quarter. 
through and blocking foul. Unfortunately for uh, Baronic, after hitting that second three, the longer of the two, it was him that was sleeping a little bit on, on defense, maybe just a bit out of position. He tried to play catch up, and that's why uh, Rapp got free for the three. That pulls, with, pulls us to a two point game. How fun is this? Timeout taken by Ravenna with 424 left, fans. Stay right there. We got a great finish coming up. Soy biodiesel from Nebraska soybeans lowers our dependence on foreign oil. It has properties that reduce engine wear. And it burns without harmfully polluting the atmosphere. The Nebraska Soybean Board encourages the use of soy biodiesel. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. Graduation is right around the corner. Do you know where you want to be? Nebraska Public Power District employs a diverse workforce throughout the state. From engineers to line technicians and environmental specialists to customer service representatives. We also offer educational co-op and internship opportunities to qualified college students. Nebraska Public Power District, it's where you want to be. Back at the Devaney Center, we've had a wild last couple of minutes of action. Freeman down by two, Ravenna at the line. John Klosterman after the foul, will shoot two. And he makes the first. Klosterman with just four points today. He averages 12.4. As you take a look at that Ravenna bench. That one came up short. Three-point game. Freeman held a very brief lead until Connor Baronic decided to play Kobe Bryant and make a couple of NBA-style three-pointers. Now we'll see what Freeman does on their end. Busboom looks inside, denied. That was good defense on the front side. Klosterman by Klosterman, unfortunately, his teammate, Luke Sean Payne, got in the back. Yeah, Sean Payne has been working awfully hard down there defensively, trying to keep Schlake in check. That's not an easy assignment. Payne giving up three inches to the big fella. But Klosterman, yeah, right, John. He just kind of hanging back there, trying to keep the ball from going through that passing lane. If you're Freeman, you just need to continue being patient. We have not heard much from Kyle Schlake. There was a drive by the forward that time. Pella, but no points. And now Ravenna with the three-point lead and a foul on the floor. That is going to be number seven against Freeman. That'll mean free throws. Let's take a look. These were the two threes. This was right after Freeman took the lead. Powell with the first. He's three feet, four feet. Look at that. Six feet beyond the arc there. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, man. I don't ever want to play horse against Connor Burbonic. I think, I think we can come up with a new nickname for the freshman, the baby-faced assassin. My <laughs> gosh. That was... The whole outside of outside of a desperation heave, I don't think I have ever seen in a state tournament game in my 14 years covering this a three, you know, just a regular jump shot three taken from that distance and poke from behind. Will they get it? Yes. Good defense by Ravenna as they have turned the wick up here and have gone on a run here to take a five point lead and they've got the ball back. Here it is coming up from behind. Good recovery, by, good recovery by Crowell. Trailing the play, just went after the basketball. Mitzel did not see him coming. Now, what will Ravenna do here? Will they slow it up again? They had started to do that in the third quarter, and it almost cost them. Eat a little clock here. Be patient. That's usually the strategy in these games with no shot clock involved. But you see Freeman really cranking up the defense, especially on, on the ball. Moments ago, Mingus had it, but Buspin was right there. Buspin not giving him much breathing room. Mingus looking for help. There's the back door to Johnson. The seniors working together for a seven-point lead under three to go. And 
Freeman needs some retaliation in a hurry. And I think that's why you're patient on offense, because you figure if you run a long enough set, you're going to catch somebody napping, or you can bait somebody into that back cut. Timeout, Jim McLaughlin and Freeman. Falcons down seven in the Class C2 championship. Programming made possible by Time Warner Cable. Supporting local performing arts and arts education with projects like Adventure Lead and our annual Arts Immersion Project. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. You are watching NET1 and NET HD. Each year we all wish for that great looking garden or the best tasting tomato. Hi, I'm Kim Todd, host of Backyard Farmer. Join me and a panel of UNL Extension experts each week as we answer your lawn and garden questions. You'll find out how to get rid of it, keep it, grow it, do it better than ever with help from Backyard Farmer. Plus, Backyard Farmer Extra answers all of your email and your letters. Coming in April to NET1. Well, there apparently wasn't as much to say in Jim McLaughlin's huddle for Freeman as there was for Paul Veronica and Ravenna. Freeman was already back out on the floor ready to go about 20 seconds before Ravenna, and it's Freeman that needs the points right here. They're down by 7, 245 left. They'll enter it to the big guy, but Schlake can't get it. Ball tipped around, and a foul coming up on Metzl as he hooked the arm underneath, going for the loose ball, and that's number four on Menzel. So Menzel, who was the spiritual leader of the comeback for Freeman, now in danger of being disqualified from the game on fouls. Now Ravenna, they're on a 5-0 uh, run, potentially to make it six here. Got to point out that they've held Freeman off the scoreboard over the past few minutes. They've done it by putting a lot of blue jerseys right around Schlake. I know Schlake just got that last shot off, but he's having to work so hard in the post Excellent job down low defensively by Ravenna here in this fourth quarter. And good strategy as well, even though Freeman is in a spot where they need to hit some threes, but they haven't been hitting their threes. Just two of nine here this morning. And now a nine-point deficit. This was just a few moments after Freeman had taken the lead. Bus boom, that's going to be short. And Freeman's struggles from beyond the arc continue. I think Freeman is aware of how badly they need points right now. They need a big shot. They just got to make it a point to not try to force anything. 51-42, you want to keep it 51-42 and start to inch into this deficit because the clock's going to start to tick. 2.24 to go in the game. Menzel off the floor. McKeegan in for Freeman to keep him out of that foul trouble. And that's a near travel against the Blue Jays, but they do get it into the front court. Time is running out. Busboom just takes it away. He was probably headed in for the foul. Gets a big layup right there. Now it's down to seven, but they need another big play. Can wow, Ravenna respond again? See Busboom just flying all around the floor, trying to come up with the turnover. Wow, a lot of physical contact up top as the freshman Connor Baronic was laid to the mat by Freeman's Jordan Pella after he dished off. And then the foul came closer to the basket. And we'll see free throws coming up. It'll be a free throw game, I have to believe, for the Blue Jays. That last sequence, Mintzel was on the bench for Freeman because he has those four fouls. Right once the foul was called, he came right in, back in the ball game. That's the last one and one free throw opportunity, and Klosterman missed the front end. So a break for Freeman. Menzel will take the three. The high bounce won't go in, and the rebound to Johnson, then stolen back. Still loose on the floor. Who's going to come up with it? And it's tipped out, and a timeout taken. Timeout taken by Freeman's Jim McLaughlin, who was screaming for the timeout when the ball was loose, hoping that he could get possession and the timeout to save the ball. Then the ball was tipped out. To the open man, Menzel, and the timeout was then accepted. They do have two left. 
But it's a seven-point game with 94 seconds left. He exchanged a smile with the official after that, uh, saying that's not exactly what I wanted. But granted, he said he wanted the timeout. The official gave the timeout. He was hoping to get it when there was a scramble on the floor so they would not lose possession. But sure enough, here we are, no harm done. They still have a few uh, TOs to go for the final stretch, remaining 134. Seven yeah. point ball game. And you know McLaughlin would have liked to have not only saved the timeout, but also with all those bodies on the floor, there was an opportunity for an easy basket. Freeman down seven here with possession. At some point, you gotta figure there's gotta be a three in this mix. And that's been tough sledding today for the Falcons. Oh, a nice defense there. It looked like Freeman was trying to get the basketball into Busman, but instead, Crowell was all over him. Three from the corner, way too strong at the offensive board and the putback by Busboom. It's a five-point game, and there's one of the two remaining timeouts taken by the Falcons. Their lead is now down to five. Ravenna will inbound, and you know what's coming here. That's why the timeout was called, because Ravenna's going to get the basketball, needing to go the length of the floor. So McLaughlin quickly called the timeout so he could set up his full court press. You can expect the Falcons to be extremely aggressive on the defensive end, full court press. They will be looking to intercept any passes. They will looking to be get the basketball off the dribble. That's what they're going to try to do. Get a quick turnover. Hopefully it will turn into some offense. That's their plan to try to cut into this five point deficit. Right now, you've got to believe that Mensa will probably not be on the floor. He's got four fouls. Then you've got Bus Boom and Rap each with three. And yes, Mensa will stay on the bench. As you take a look at him, just took a seat. Don't want to get him in foul trouble. You know if Freeman cannot get possession right back that the foul is going to be coming up shortly. But remember, from here on out, it's two free throws for the Blue Jays. And they break the press with good passing. Good job by Ravenna. Excellent passing. Working all space in the backcourt. And now pressure on Baronic at the sideline. He's in trouble and traveling is called. Baronic wanted the timeout. Head coach Paul Baronic wanted the timeout. His son was trapped at the sideline and they call the travel with a minute eight to go. That was really tough because Baronic, Paul Baronic, head coach, really ran up there and was calling timeout. Connor Bronick had the fist up. I guess that's the new way. We've seen it several times, especially in the girls' state tournament. The fist is the new way to indicate timeout. They did get it, and unfortunately for Ravenna, turnover. Yeah, Connor Bronick very frustrated. Three from Schlake. In and out. And a foul on the rebound against Freeman. Well, what were we saying earlier? It was the basket to our right that was rejecting all those. Well, for the first time, the basket to our left rejected a three that looked like it might have been heading down and what a three that would have been for Kyle Schlake. Instead, it will be free throws back at the other end and it's two the rest of the way. John Klosterman to the line. You cannot fault the shot for Freeman either. It was a wide open look and that's what Freeman wanted regardless of who's taking that shot. If Schlake has the range, which that one was about halfway down, so you can't fault the shot. It was an open look for three, which would have made this a two point game. Right now, the discussion, I believe, is over who should be shooting the foul shots. Klosterman is at the line, and I believe that McLaughlin was saying it should be Payne that shoots the free throws. The foul was called on Busman as he came flying through, and that's trying his fourth. to get the rebound. So you have both Busman and Mintzel with four fouls, both on the floor with less than a minute to play. This one would make it a three possession game, and it does. 58.9 seconds left, Freeman. At some point, they're gonna need that long distance shot. Will it be here? Mensel gets it! And a timeout, I believe. No. I think the ball was knocked out of bounds. Yes, it, it was. was. A strange sequence there, John. I thought maybe the bodies were all over the floor. And that allows, and this is important because that dead ball allows substitutions. Both Busboom and Mensel can come off the floor so they don't pick up their fifth fouls. Now here comes the pressure. Reserves in the game. Trying to break the press. They will. 40 seconds left. Ravenna leads by four. Johnson nearly walked with it. He just kind of threw that pass away. Luckily, he had a teammate there to chase it down. Excellent job by Ravenna again. A, remaining poised in the backcourt. B, using excellent passes to break the full court press. 
This team plays well beyond its years. Yes, it does, and they are so very young. You've got, as we mentioned, Johnson and Mingus are graduating, but everyone else returns. Look out in the Elite Platt Conference. And Klosterman has made his last three free throws in a row. Makes it a five-point game. And now you'll see Bus Boom and Menzel back in the game, each with four fouls, but they were substituted for at the last horn. Ravenna have been pretty solid at the line today. 12 of 16. Missed the second. Five-point game, less than 30 to go. Ball was tipped and knocked out of bounds as Josh Crowell was putting the heat on. Crowell's been a nice spark defensively here in the second half. The inbound comes in to wrap, and there's a foul. They do have one to give before free throws. That's excellent coaching, John. It's good strategy. Just to have the wherewithal to know that if it ever came down to the situation of needing to foul and put them at the free throw line, let's go ahead and burn one. No harm done in that. Now that burned about a second and a half off the clock. And remember, it's one and one the rest of the way, at least for the next three. Now, clock is running, and they had to inbound deep in their own backcourt. That's going to burn more precious time. Menzel takes a long three. It is no good. And the rebound to Ravenna with 17 seconds left and they can ice it at the strike. But again, Ravenna with that good defense forcing the inbound to come deep into their own backcourt. That burned a lot of time off the clock and gave Ravenna's other four players a chance to set themselves up in the defensive end. And Ravenna, as you said it, Kevin, playing beyond their years, and they are 17 seconds and a couple of free throws from a state championship. To play this confident and this composed in a tight game, fourth quarter state championship. That, that This is so impressive to see from a young group to play the way that they are here late in the contest. Not phased by any of the drama that was building here at the Devaney Center. And we will go back to those two threes back to back from Connor Baronic after Freeman scratching and clawing their way back from a 15 point second half deficit to take their first lead and Connor Baronic hitting two threes from a combined distance of nearly 60 feet. That gum getting a workover from Jim McLaughlin. He needs these free throws to be missed right here by Eric Johnson. It's a slow start by Freeman that kind of they were trying to climb the mountain the entire ballgame. They finally did get the lead in the fourth quarter, but Ravenna answered quickly. Johnson has nine, trying to make it ten right here. Got awfully quiet here in the Devaney Center for that free throw. Yeah, it did. It, it got real loud early in the fourth quarter as Freeman was making their comeback. Them both. Uh, now a seven point contest. Menzel, who worked so hard to get his team back into the game. Bus boom, way off on the three. And it'll stay with Freeman, but there's only 9.4 seconds left. It would take a little something called a miracle to pull Freeman out of this fire. Need a four point play and then an additional three. There's the three, but it's short. Offensive rebound on the putback. Timeout with 4.7 seconds left, but it's a five-point game. That is the last timeout for the Falcons. But Ravenna leads it by five, and you know we've talked about how Baronic's threes were such a momentum changer, but it was also that defense that really iced down Freeman. They had really behind Menzel had come back into this game on his breakaways and had taken the lead but once they hit those threes and combine that with that full court pressure defense that was the turning point in this game so as much as we want to talk about Baronic the team effort by this Ravenna ball club has been so critical and it, you have to be impressed with the mix of, I mean, really, you won't see another team today that has quite this gap between star players at the senior end and star players at the freshman end. Yeah, specifically the post-defense. Schlake was really non-existent here in the fourth quarter. Absolutely true. He was... They took him out of the game. One of their real only offensive threats as on the inbound. 
takes about a second and a half off the clock. But Schlenk was really the only offensive threat in the first half, was silenced in the second with just, I believe, four points. Yeah, four points for Schlenk here in the second half. And to the free throw line, Eric Johnson. Beyond the defense here in the fourth quarter, John, I really think the other turning point in this ballgame was the ability by Ravenna to break Freeman's full court press because that's how Freeman started to inch back in the game. Not only Mintzel's uh, big plays, but also the fact that Freeman was giving the Blue Jays some troubles with that full court press, a lot of traps, forcing some turnovers. But Ravenna, when they were up by about three, five, and Freeman was really coming at him, being very aggressive defensively. They weren't rattled. They stayed very composed. Chris passes and got the ball across the timeline. There's the inbound, and that will do it. Ravenna takes baby steps to the state championship. I don't know how the rest of the day is going to play out, but that might be one of our more unlikely champions. A young team that played well beyond its years. They win the Class C2 crown. We're back with the medal presentations right after this. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. My job with Nebraska Public Power District takes me to new heights, offers me challenging experiences, like me, the utility cares about Nebraska. I go home at night knowing that what I do makes a difference. To put it simply, I am where I want to be. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us. Together with your local public power utility. Ravenna 57, Freeman 51, the Blue Jays state champions for the sixth time in school history and for the second time since 2005. Let's meet both the state champions, but first the runners up from Freeman. Here again, PA announcer Doc Weiniger. Of these outstanding teams. The awards will be presented by NSAA Board of Control members Max Kroger of Ord and Terry Keneally of York. They'll be assisted by U.S. Bank representative Melissa Yancey. First, here are the awards for the 2009 Class C2 runner-up from Freeman High School. The head coach Jim McLaughlin and your assistant step toward the middle of the court to present the silver medals to each member of your team. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number 11, Dylan Wallman. Number 15, Taylor McKeekin. Number 24, Hayden Scott. Number 30, Andy Garecki. Number 34, Kellen Unver. Number 45, Brandon Altman. Number 55, Dallas Eichelfer. Number 14, Eric Rath. Number 22, Ryan Busboo. Number 23, Elliot Mensal. Number 35, Kyle Schley. Number 40, Jordan Pella. And now, all of you are welcome to receive the runner-up trophy from your school. Congratulations, Freeman High School, 2009 Class C2 State Runner-Up. And now, to the champions.
Williams from Ravenna High School. First, head coach Paul Baronic. We have a special coaches award for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now, coach, hand out the gold medals to your championship team members. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number 12, Spencer Kromosta. Number 21, Trevor Sabor. Number 22, Josh Crowell. Number 25, Tyson Anderson. Number 30, Connor Barane. Number 42, Ethan Zorb. Number 44, Sean Payne. Number 15, Eric Johnson. Number 20, John Clusterman. Number 31, Riley Barane. Number 40, Adam Mingus. Number 41, Fred Douglas. And now, all of you are welcome to receive the state championship trophy. Congratulations to the Blue Jays of Ravenna High School, the 2009 Class C2 State Basketball Champions. And another championship celebration for Ravenna, 2005. They finished runner-up in 2006. But they are back in the winner's circle one more time. A thriller. Ravenna wins at 57-51. The runner-up coach, Jim McLaughlin, is with our Dan Hedman. Thanks, Coach. Uh, very tough way to end a great season. Yeah. Uh, you know, kids didn't give up and, and battled back. I don't know what the worst deficit, maybe 15 or so, and got a one-point lead. And, and Connor Baronic hit some big threes there. And those were, were big shots that he made. And, um, you know, I love our kids. They they work hard and they've done everything we've asked of them. And, and uh, I'm very, very proud of, of who they are as men and who they are as basketball players. You mentioned that one stretch, overcoming a 10-point deficit with some, some key plays. But what was the difference down the stretch today? Well, you know, I mean, there's plays to be made. And, and you know, that's part of basketball. You know, sometimes you make them, sometimes you don't. And, and unfortunately, you know, they made a couple big ones, and, and we maybe missed some opportunities. But Ravin is a heck of a team. You know, they're well coached, and kids play hard and very disciplined, and they can shoot the ball, and they showed that today. Back in the title game for the first time since the school merger, and part of the reason is two very talented seniors in Mensel and Bus Boom bid them farewell today. Yeah, you know, they've, they've meant a lot to our program. This whole uh, team's meant a lot to our program. They work so, so hard to, to get everything they've gotten, and, and I, you know, I just wish it could have been a better send-off for them because they do mean a lot to me and they mean a lot uh, to the community as well. All right, thanks very much, Coach. Great season. We'll be back with your C2 champions from Ravenna after a short break. Live coverage of the 2009 NSAA State High School Basketball Championships is brought to you in part by Where Futures Begin, Community Colleges, Central, Mid Plains, Northeast, Southeast, or Western Nebraska Community Colleges. The Nebraska Federation of Catholic School Parents, supporting schools that enrich Nebraska communities and promoting educational choice through identity, unity, collaboration, and empowerment. One Oak Energy Marketing, natural gas from One Oak, the one in energy.
Concordia University, Nebraska is a Christ-centered community ready to prepare students for a life of leadership and service. The first item on the, today's agenda. The Nebraska Legislature is back in session and you can see live gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage on NET2 or by logging on to netnebraska.org slash capital. Plus, listen weekdays to NET Radio for in-depth reports on what's making news in the Nebraska Legislature. Reaching more people with more choices, watch, listen, or log on to NET and be more informed. Liftoff. Uh, I was born to do this. Lamps. I have a huge heritage here, and I'm very proud to be home. Thanks. Watch NET's production of Homemade Astronaut, The Clay Anderson Story, coming in June on NET1 and NETHD. First of six state championships in the book. Ravenna, 57, Freeman, 51. Let's take a look at the final numbers. And really, both teams heated up in the second half. Field goal percentage came up. Ravenna ends up winning at 46-43. Those three-pointers, though, 7 of 21. Freeman hit all of their threes in the second half, but it was not enough. They ended up winning the rebound battle. Turnovers pretty much even. Leading scores for the state champions, Eric Johnson and Adam Mingus, each with 12. And Connor Baronic, we won't forget those threes for a long time. He had 11. The runners up led by Elliot Menzel with 15. State championship interviews with Kevin are coming up next. Programming on NET television is provided in part by Nebraska Public Power District. Always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. By Time Warner Cable, supporting local high school athletics and arts education in the communities we serve. And by Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org. In the early 20th century, Edward and Margaret Gerke of Lincoln felt it was important to explore our country's national parks, photographing and writing about these magnificent treasures. Please join me in NET television to experience their story and those of so many others who have been touched by America's national parks. There are many ties to Nebraska in this series through the photos of Edward and Margaret Gerke with the help and assistance from the Nebraska State Historical Society. Watch it on NET. Ravenna wins the Class C2 championship 57-51 over the Freeman Falcons. Joined now in the winner's circle with head coach Paul Baronic. Paul, congratulations. What a win by your team. Uh, it's a pretty special group, and, uh, you know, i got to give credit to, uh, you know, the, the person that makes it special in my life is uh, my Lord and Savior. He makes me a better man every day, and I, I'm very humbled to even be in this situation. But our guys are just a great group of guys, and, and we were just fortunate to win. Freeman's a great team, and, and uh, we just happened to play well today. To be able to do this with your youth, how does that happen? You're you're playing so many freshmen out yeah, there. That you know, some of these guys can't even drive to practice. You know, they don't <laughs> even have license. So, uh, you know, they're just a special group, and they really don't care who gets it done. You know, some teams that might have freshmen step ahead and do some things. You know, may, maybe some animosity, but uh, we're, we're just a, a family here, and uh, we, we try to keep it that way. This game got awfully interesting in the second half. They even took the lead at one point in time. How did you guys withstand that rally, regain the lead, and then, you know, pull away in the end? Well, our deal has been uh, stay the course, kind of been a theme of ours, and, and just play the Ravan away. And, and uh, they really showed a lot of resiliency and, and didn't panic, and we did hit some big shots that we needed. And uh, I thought Adam and Eric came and stepped up and, and did some things as seniors as a kind of a senior urgency. 
Coach, congratulations. We'll talk to some of those players coming up. But for now, for Coach Baranek, congratulations to the Ravenna Blue Jays, the Class C2 champions. It's new, it's exciting, it's the NE Team Member Card. When you become a member at the $80 level and above, enjoy two-for-one dining deals at over 120 restaurants throughout Nebraska. From Scotts Bluff to Omaha, Valentine to Hastings, the NE Team Member Card is your ticket to delicious dining and great deals. It's our way of saying thanks for supporting NET Television. Become an NET member now and enjoy two-for-one entrees at restaurants all over the state. Hello, I'm Stacy Decker. Are you already using a DTV converter box for digital television? Remember to run a channel scan to watch all available digital channels. Some antennas don't always provide a good picture because of placement or installation. Local obstacles may interfere with reception or you may need to upgrade to a more suitable antenna. In many cases, a new channel scan will solve your problem. NET is here to help you. Call us at 1-800-698-3426 or visit us online at netnebraska.org slash dtv. NET Television takes you through a musical journey of this truly American art form. Watch NET's production of Ragtime Cabaret. Coming soon to NET One. Ravenna players are all smiles today. Champions of Class C2 57 51. First player up in our interview is Brett Douglas. Brett, congratulations. What does this mean for yourself and the program? Oh, it's it's just great. I mean, we've been working towards it all year. We just, it's tradition. We've been wearing the tradition shirts underneath our jerseys or underneath our warm ups all year over our jerseys just to remind us what we're working towards. And, you just talk about this game. Freeman uh, made that run there in the second half. How did you guys withstand it? Our whole thing has just been stay the course all year, and that's what we've been doing, and that's been our main goal for the whole tournament down here. It's what we've been saying every time, halftime in the locker room, stay the course. You know, the game's not going to come easy. Everybody's, everybody's out to do their best, and we, we just stuck with it. Right way to go. Congratulations. We'll let you bring in one of your teammates now. John Klosterman is second up here. John finished with seven points. Talk about the way you were able to pull uh, Schlake, their big fella, out of the ballgame there in the second half. How, how did you accomplish that? Uh, well, we just we started Brett uh, when he was guarding Brett and start the game. We wanted Brett to make a three there and bring the big guy out so we had room to drive and stuff and executed the game plan pretty well. But you guys seem to really change defensively and uh, limit his touches there in the second half. Was that something that was mentioned during halftime, during a timeout? Yeah, we wanted to make sure that whenever he got the ball, we needed to double team him and force somebody else to beat us. And... Good, John. Congratulations. Thank you. Connor Bronick up next. Connor finished with uh, 11 points, uh, three threes. And I first have to ask, what's the longest shot you've ever made? Probably about like in a game. Uh, sure. A half court shot, probably. And, behind it. and then today, you're about five feet beyond the three-point line there in the second half when it's a close contest. Talk us through that shot. I don't know. I was just shooting with a bunch of confidence, and I practice that shot all the time in practice. And how often does it go in? About 30 to 40% of the time, <laughs> hopefully. But it, but it went in when it really yeah. counted today. Just talk about that moment for you. I was happy and glad that it went in. It's a great feeling. Awesome, Connor, congratulations. He'll be back for more, just a freshman here on Ravenna's team. Eric Johnson will come up next. Eric finished with a nice performance, 12 uh, points. Just talk about this championship win. Feels pretty good, right? Feels great. Just talk us through today's game. You guys got off to that hot start, and you're able to come away with the title. We just stayed the course. We had a little dry spell, but we knew we'd come back and finish the game off good. Thank you, congratulations. And last but not least, senior Adam Mingus, one of two seniors on this Ravenna squad. You get to go out with the championship. Way to go. Just talk us about uh, talk to us about what this means. Um, feels good. I had it in the pit of my stomach all year from last year, coming up a little short. So feels good to get back and finish it this time. Adam, and just stay in the course. That's, I guess, the motto from today's game. Defensively, how did you get this done in the second half? Because you really limited what they were able to do in the fourth quarter. 
Um, we had a lot of younger players step up, played good defensively, tried to keep it away from Bus Boom and Menzel, and we kept them out of the lane and made them shoot three pointers, and it paid off. You're leaving this program in good hands. Yep. Feels good. With the state championship. Adam, congratulations again. The champions of Class C2, the Ravenna Baby Jays. Maybe back for more over the next few years. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to the NET studio. I'm Jeff Beckman, executive director of the NET Foundation, and I'm joined here by membership director Jenny Herstein. The action you're watching now on NET is made possible by generous private gifts from individuals just like you, as well as Nebraska corporations and foundations who believe that airing high school sports on public television in Nebraska is important. Right now, if you'd like to become a supporter of NET Sports, you can do so by joining the Sports Partners Club. Jenny? Since we've launched the Sports Partners Club in 2007, Jeff, over a thousand Nebraskans have become members. We're especially grateful for that support, and if you're already a sports partner, we hope you've enjoyed the range of thank you gifts we've offered. This year, we continue to offer those gifts, the duffel bag, DVDs, commemorative coins, Husker blankets, and more. And when you contribute $80 and above, you'll receive the new NET member card, which entitles you to great dining deals all over Nebraska, as well as discounts on online merchants. You can be eligible for the NET member card benefits when you travel to other states as well. There are other great benefits for sports partners too, and I'll tell you about that in just a little bit. Well, you know, Jenny, I've been carrying my sports duffel bag with me to the gym all winter, and it's just a great durable bag, big enough to carry a lot of extra shirts, towels, shoes, and water. And then these pockets on the side are also great just to stuff the extra keys and other things that you carry along to the gym. So I would recommend this highly. The other thing that I'm really proud of is this commemorative coin of Bo Pelini and uh, Tom Osborne. You have uh, Coach Osborne on one side, and you have uh, Coach Pelini on the other. And this coin, I'm convinced, is going to be a collector's item. Support high school and college sports action on NET and receive these great gifts. Log on to our website or call customer service. If you leave a message, we'll be sure your call is returned within the next business day. For $80, you'll receive an NET member card, and you can choose from gifts from our long list of sports programs, the duffel bag or the Tom Osborne and Bo Pelini commemorative coin. Log on now or call me during the week. NET delivers more than 200 hours of sports programming into your living room every year. And with your financial support, we'll continue to bring you more sports action in the years to come. We cover lots of sports action in Omaha, where we bring you Creighton Blue Jay basketball and UNO Maverick hockey and the high school wrestling championships at the Quest Center. Later in the spring, we broadcast the Nebraska and Creighton baseball games, both from Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha and Haymarket Park in Lincoln. And we bring you UNO football. Now, NET is your public television station, no matter where you live in the state. Although our studio is located in Lincoln, we are Omaha's public television station. NET is Omaha's home for sports. When I travel the panhandle in central parts of the state, or when I go to the northeast or the southeast parts of Nebraska, everybody proudly takes ownership of NET. Well, our goal during the Inspire Nebraska campaign during the next several years is for Omaha residents to take pride in that same sense of ownership. And right now, Jenny, I'd like to challenge residents of our largest city to join the Sports Partners Club. Why not take that challenge? You can become a member of the Sports Partners Club at the $80 level by logging onto this website or by calling our customer service line. You'll choose from our broad range of thank you gifts and enjoy all the benefits of the NET member card. Two for one offers at restaurants across the state as well as discounts on several online merchants. But the real exciting added benefits of joining the Sports Partners Club include a personal invitation to discuss the upcoming football season with Adrian Fiala and special guests at the preseason Sports Partners Breakfast. You'll also get exclusive invitations to pregame events throughout the year and an insider's look at sports through our e-updates. A little earlier I mentioned how NET wants to be Omaha's public television station, just as it's regarded here in Lincoln and throughout greater Nebraska. During the state tournament broadcast, we hear from viewers across the entire state, from Cozad to Kimball, and from Wilbur to Winnebago. All of us at NET appreciate the incredible support we receive across Nebraska. And Jenny and I want to thank you for your support. 
Our new member card includes restaurants in Omaha and Lincoln, as well as the Cheetah Cafe in Paxton, Ball Sports Bar in Grand Island, Dusters in Columbus, and the Antelope Creek Cafe in Gordon, and more than 120 others. Thank you, Jenny, and thank you, sports partners from throughout the state, for your generous support. Now let's get back to our coverage of NSAA championships on NET. Putting a wrap on the Class C2 championship, it was Ravenna defeating Freeman here this morning, 57 to 51, and really an exciting basketball game that didn't see but just three lead changes. Kyle Schlake was a big part of Freeman's both offensive and defensive efforts in the first half, but was held to just four points in the second. The story of the second half was Elliot Menzel, this one off his hip, and this one in a little more traditional fashion, but for Ravenna, well, they had the three-pointers going. Johnson with one, but the two daggers right after Freeman took their first lead in the second half. There's the first, and then just a few seconds later, look at how far back he is from that three-point line. Connor Baronic with two killer threes, the momentum, the momentum switcher, and helping Ravenna to a state championship. We're back with a preview of Class D2 coming up next. What makes a good Frontline story is really the ability to go to the heart of a difficult issue. Frontline and public television is one of the last places doing this kind of work. We've been doing this job for 25 years and people have come to trust us because we answer to no one but you. Hi, I'm Rod Bates, General Manager at NET, inviting you to the 2009 NET Governor's Premiere. This is the third year collaborating with the Governor's Office to showcase important stories by and about Nebraskans. Join us April 25th at 6 Central at the Strategic Air and Space Museum for a special preview of Homemade Astronaut, the Clay Anderson story. As soon as the engines lit off, man, there's, there's no thinking about anything else except the enormousness of the whole thing. I was born to do this. Lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis to assemble the framework. Clay Anderson and his wife Susan will be our guests of honor. Reserve your tickets today. I hope to see you at the 2009 NET Governor's Premiere. Each year, we all wish for that great looking garden or the best tasting tomato. Hi, I'm Kim Todd, host of Backyard Farmer. Join me and a panel of UNL Extension experts each week as we answer your lawn and garden questions. You'll find out how to get rid of it, keep it, grow it, do it better than ever with help from Backyard Farmer. Plus, Backyard Farmer Extra answers all of your email and your letters. Coming in April to NET1. Center. We're about seven and a half minutes away from the D2 championship finals. Joined now by Jim Angeli, the uh, assistant director of the NSAA. You're here to talk about the Believers and Achievers program, something that is going on this week and, and last week as well. Yeah, we've got uh, 18 students from Nebraska high schools that are seniors that uh, we're going to recognize at halftime of the 130 ball game and halftime of the 5 o'clock ball game. Some outstanding students who are uh, academically gifted, they're gifted in their activities. And then they've also got a great heart and great spirit, and they give back to their communities and their schools as well. It's good to see the student athletes honored. One kid singled out is, is Josh Jones of Omaha Central, a guy who overcame heart surgery two years ago. Uh, it was actually last year when Josh was a senior. Uh, he's going to receive the National Federation's Spirit of Sport Award for District 5. He overcame, uh, had to have open heart surgery in September a year ago, and then made it back for the state championships and led Omaha Central central to its uh, third consecutive state title last year. A really neat story. And we're going to honor him at uh, the end of the first quarter of this uh, Class A ball game coming up. 
sometimes you get lost in the athletics, but how important is it to have that well-rounded student athlete? Well, for the Believers and Achievers program, it's amazing what all these kids are involved in. They're involved in speech, play production, music, uh, journalism, the yearbook. Uh, we got some outstanding students out there that, you know, not only do well out on the court, but they're, they're able to write, they're able to perform, they're able to sing, play music. It, it amazes me every single year what this U.S. Bank program comes up with in the outstanding students we have across the state. All right, thanks very much. We'll look forward to that presentation. 5.45 until the D2 finals. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Jeff Beckman here in our NET studio. For many years, my family and I would spend hours watching the NSAA championships on NET, unless we were at the Devaney Center in person. And now for the past three seasons, I've been with NET and I'm still watching championships with you once again if I'm not at the Devaney Center. Well, watching these championships during March Madness is a truly a highlight of the year for all of us. Jeff, our family has also watched the high school championships on NET, our season ticket at home. Like the cranes flying back into central Nebraska, the basketball tournaments on NET are a sign that spring is just around the corner. Well, you know, Jenny, you mentioned something about a season ticket at home. NET takes great pride in delivering sports programming into homes across Nebraska, yet the costs of carrying sports action continues to grow during a time when state and federal funding is plateauing and even declining. Now, in order to continue bringing you 200 hours of sports action annually on NET, we're going to need private financial support. Today, you have an opportunity to support NET and receive some very nice benefits. We've created the Sports Partners Club to enhance your experience of college and high school sports through your involvement with NET Sports. As a Sports Partners Club member, you'll enjoy a long list of benefits, and you'll be invited to a special breakfast hosted by Adrian Fiala prior to the opening of the football season. You'll also be invited to a number of tailgate parties, including ones prior to the Nebraska Creighton baseball games, and you'll receive a special Sports Partners e-newsletter. You can receive your special gifts and be added to our invitation list for the tailgate parties at Creighton, UNO, UNL, and UNK events by logging on now to this website or calling me during regular business hours. Be a sports partner. Call me now. I'm anxious to sign up more supporters so we can continue to bring you the best sports action on NET year after year. Now, today we have 1,000 members, and during the NSAA championships, over 100,000 sports fans tune into NET. That means that 1% of our viewers are committing financial support. Now, imagine what we could do if even 10% of you watching right now join the Sports Partners Club. I'm challenging you right now to log on to our website or you can call our customer service line and leave your name and number. We'll call you back within the next business day. Now, if you've logged on, called in, or you're already a member of the Sports Partners Club, thank you for your support. And now let's get back to the NSAA Championships on NET. Championship Saturday rolls on at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Game two of six, the D1, D2 championship rather, Ewing versus Sterling, a pair of impressive teams in the title contest. Yeah, we're going to see one of the best players, not just in class D2, but in the entire state, in Austin Kotzer, who is dangerously close to setting a class scoring record in this tournament, but he is dealing with some injury issues. And a Sterling team, a little bit of a homecoming. Jimmy Motes returns to Lincoln, leading the Jets back to a place of prominence. The Jets won three titles in a four-year span in the mid-90s. They are back in the title game behind that former Northeast Rocket and Creighton Blue Jay. We're coming back with the player introductions right after this. Soy biodiesel from Nebraska soybeans lowers our dependence on foreign oil. It has properties that reduce engine wear. 
and it burns without harmfully polluting the atmosphere. The Nebraska Soybean Board encourages the use of soy biodiesel. Programming made possible by Time Warner Cable. Supporting local educators by providing free cable connections to public, private, and parochial schools in our area. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. My job as an engineer for the Nebraska Public Power District is rewarding. My education and technical skills are used every day to help generate electricity for Nebraska. And I feel good because I believe that what I do maintains the state's quality of life. NPPD is where I want to be. Nebraska Public Power District. Always there when you need us. Together with your local public power utility. Ewing and Sterling are getting set for the D2 Boys Basketball Championship game. Ewing going for the Grand Slam, so to say, John. Yeah, it is believed to be the first time that a team could win volleyball, girls basketball, football, and boys basketball all in the same academic year. Chance for history for the small town of Ewing. Let's meet the Tigers and the Jets. It's the D2 Championship here on 1011 and NET Sports. players and coaches competing in today's game. First, the non-starters for the visiting team, the Ewing Tigers. Number 10, Jacob Rudolph. Number 11, Bo Fry. Number 21, Alex Hyde. 